Hi guys, so today I want to do a video all about the top five books I read in 2015. The first book I wanted to mention is Sleepless Nights by Elizabeth Hardwick and this book blurs the lines between memoir and fiction because the main character is also called Elizabeth and some of the events that take place in this book mirror the life events of the author. I wouldn't say this book is exactly an epistolary novel but there are a lot of letters included which I think adds a really interesting dimension to the writing because you have the prose but you also have the letters so it gives you a bit of a different idea of what's happening and you also have some quotes that are thrown in which I found really interesting. I think the writing in this book is what really stood out to me. It's beautifully written and I think that if you enjoy reading about um, you know characters and you like a really good character study or you really enjoy stories about women looking back on their lives and kind of reminiscing, I think you would really enjoy this book. Sticking with reminiscing and memories, I have Bone Black by Bell Hooks. I actually did a video back in the fall about my top five memoirs and I will leave a link to that down below because I did mention this book. This book is also a collection of memories but it's a more straightforward memoir collection of memories and Bell Hooks is looking back on her girlhood. She looks back on when she was a child but also when she was a young woman and how she felt growing up. In this book Bell Hooks really talks a lot about being different. She talks about being a young black woman in the south. She also talks about feeling different from the rest of her family. There's a lot of tension between her and her mother and between her and other family members and this book is just such a beautiful look at her life. It's just a very well written, very interesting, very beautiful and touching book about being different and about growing up. The next book I wanted to mention is a book by one of my favorite authors and this is This Is How You Lose Her by Junot Diaz. This is a great collection of short stories all about how men treat women and how they view women. One character that appears in a lot of this author's works is Junior. He is a Dominican-American teenager and he appears in The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde as well as in many of the stories in Drown, two books that I absolutely loved. And he also appears in this. But there's also stories about different characters. It really is a look at men and women and love and relationships. And it's a beautiful book. I love the way that, you know, Diaz writes. He writes in a very modern way. He doesn't write in flowery language. He uses a lot of just regular wording, but it's still beautiful in a very different way than, for example, Elizabeth Hardwick. The next book I wanted to mention is Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf is one of those authors that I was always very intimidated by, and I never really thought I would pick up Mrs. Dalloway. But I heard a lot of recommendations of this book. I heard a lot of people talk about how great the writing is, how great the style is, and I decided in 2015 to pick it up. I'm so happy I picked it up and it was a lot easier to read than I had expected, probably because I thought it was going to be so hard. This book takes place over the course of a single day and on the surface it's about a woman, Mrs. Dalloway, who is planning a party and certain people pop up from her past and you get a lot of flashbacks even though it is taking place over the course of one day. The way that this stream of consciousness really works in this novel is that you go from one character to another to another and you barely realize that you're moving from character to character. It's just very seamlessly done which can be a bit confusing at times but also a really great tactic and a great style that I hadn't really experienced that much before. Stream of consciousness is something that I enjoy but I don't enjoy all the time but in this book is just done so well and the writing is so crisp and so well crafted. I think that a lot of people would enjoy this book even if you're worried about enjoying Virginia Woolf. The final book I want to mention is The Lady in Gold by Anne-Marie O'Connor. Before I get into what this book is about and what I really liked about it, I wanted to mention a bit of backstory. I went to New York back in February, in February 2015 I mean, with one of my friends and we did a lot of things that I found were really interesting but one of the things that really stuck with me was I went to um, a small museum called the Neue Galerie which focuses on German and Austrian art. In that museum, I saw a portrait of Adèle Bloch-Boyer, which is a portrait of a Viennese woman, and it was painted by Gustav Klimt. So I really enjoy Klimt. I have been to Austria several times because my mom is, well, my mom's family is Austrian, so I do really enjoy his paintings, and I've seen lots of his paintings in Austrian museums. So I was looking at this painting, and I was reading the description. There was a block of text just describing the painting and also explaining its history. So that painting had been stolen by the Nazis in World War II and then 
over the course of you know the years after World War II it was kept in I think the Belvedere. In 2000 a woman Maria Altman who is a descendant of Adele Blochboyer, she's actually her niece, brought the Austrian government to court to repossess some of the paintings that had been owned by her family but had been stolen by the Nazis and then kept by the Austrian government. And the court case caused a lot of, you know, controversy and then this book was written and also there's a movie that came out recently about this book. So once I got back from New York, I really wanted to track down this book. I thought the story behind it was really interesting. I, as you know, enjoy reading about World War II and since I do have a lot of Austrian family, I find reading about Vienna is really interesting because it's a city that I've spent a lot of time in. So I was really excited to pick this up and I really, really loved it. There's a lot more information about the backstory. So you get a lot of information about the woman behind the painting. So at the turn of the century in Vienna, you get a lot of history about the elite, the especially the Jewish elite in Vienna at the time. You also get a lot of information about what happened to her family during World War II. And there's a bit less information actually about the court case. So the court case takes up less of the book than the backstory, which at first I was a bit disappointed by. But I think that you get so much backstory and so much information and there's pictures. I just think that this is a really great book if you're interested in art history, if you're interested in World War II, or if you've seen this painting anywhere and were ever interested in what the story was behind it. So those are my top five books of 2015. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any recommendations of, for books that are similar to these, please let me know. And I was wondering also what was your favorite book of 2015? I don't really know which book I would choose. I think maybe if I had to choose, I would go with Sleepless Nights by Elizabeth Hardwick but I loved all of these books almost equally. I hope you guys have a nice day and I'll see you guys soon.